Hello everyone, this is part three of the final chapter regarding the John Benet Ramsey case. Today I'm going to look at the behavioral tendencies of Patsy Ramsey, the mother, as the author of the ransom note. My name is Marcel Elvers, master profiler through written communication and questioned document examiner. I use handwriting analysis, statement analysis, and behavioral trend analysis. In brief, in part one and part two, I showed that Patsy and John were deceptive, that they did not prioritize John Benet, and that Patsy is the author of the note. I will explain the whole case in detail in my upcoming book, John Benet, the final chapter. But today I'm going to focus on the core perspective of Patsy, according to her Enneagram type, and her behavioral pattern, which matches the linguistics of the ransom note. The Enneagram is a systematic and dynamic personality model, and it maps behavioral tendencies and the motivation behind them. Behavioral patterns are distinct, consistent, and progressive in nature. And this is the way it is because our behavior stems directly from our perspective, our point of view. We see the world in a certain way and therefore we need to compensate for how we view the world. In my book, One Reason, I explained the structure of the model in simplistic terms. It's mostly for lay people to understand the model and get the core of the model. The Enneagram shows us there are nine personality types. A personality is defined as a distinct behavioral pattern that is repetitive and highly habitual. Patsy Ramsey is considered, was considered a type two. And according to all what I have read, the perspective of a type two is they feel unwanted and unloved and so they compensate by earning love and appreciation. That makes them, of course, people oriented because you can only earn love and appreciation when you meet and engage with other people. They also tend to be optimistic. Their core perspective is, of course, that they must be good to others. When you're good to others, you get a pat on your back and then you feel loved and appreciated. Now, the behavior that comes along with it is that they must engage with other people. They tend to volunteer, loving and caring, and they're also self-sacrificial. What that means is they place the needs of others before their own. And so we can call them very social engaging, they may become a social butterfly. And Patsy was known to be very social and volunteered for many functions in her community. A speech pattern also exists for each type. Of course, when you need to be good to others and you're social, that reflects in the word selection you use. Type twos tend to be kind. They tend to want to befriend comfort others, and they care. So their speech pattern is summarized as they sympathize. So the average type two is kind, loving, generous, and they are filled with good intentions. Like I said, they prioritize the needs of others, and in their need to be needed, they may insert themselves in the lives of others. Let me do this for you. And therefore, they have a distinct pride in being needed. So when we look at the model as a type two, a two is basically a people pleaser. However, when they don't get from others what they need from them, they may become intrusive 
and even overbearing. When they're really stressful, they become dominant and confrontational. I show you more about the Enneagram on my YouTube channel. This is not the place to explain the model as it is very involved. The ransom note was two and a half pages long and that was a blessing. After all, the more information is provided, the more you have to work with. And we noticed that Patsy's core perspective, pride in being needed, being kind, but also in stress becoming domineering, returns in the ransom note. Here we see that the context is, of course, that there is a kidnapping and we leave a ransom note behind. Now we know that Patsy wrote the note, but the pretend to be kidnapper introduces him herself as we are SBTC. We are a group of individuals that represent a small foreign faction. There is no kidnapper that will introduce themselves so they can be found easier. And then also give an acronym as far as a name is concerned. The author, Patsy, the pretend to be kidnapper, also understood the relevance of proper barrier, burial. You will be denied a proper burial. And therefore, the perspective of the author, Patsy, shows the need for the proper burial. By denying it, she felt that that was a significant thing to say. The note also started with, it was the second line, we respect your business. Now your business is Mr. Ramsey's business, John's. Which kidnapper starts with complimenting the father of a kidnapped child? That makes no sense whatsoever. We also noticed that she complimented uh, with, with the respect your business. We also noticed that the word don't, although the T is missing there, was scored out. So she started saying it with, we don't respect your business and changed her mind to, we do respect your business. So this is a basic compliment. Now here we see that if the money was delivered earlier, an earlier pickup of your daughter would be considered. And so that is the self-sacrificing perspective of a type two, it's accommodation to others. Word selection like the gentleman watching over your daughter, hardcore criminals are not gentlemen. So she could not help but remain polite. Also the line, watching over your daughter, do particularly like you. Oh no, I meant do not. This type of changes in perspective show there was no intruder and Patsy is an inept criminal. The note also has unwanted advice like a type two tends to do. The delivery will be exhausting, so I advise you to be rested. Now mind you, like I said, in part two, I advise you to be arrested was supposedly written by a kidnapper while the parents were sleeping upstairs. Also bring an adequate size attaché to the bank. Makes no sense. Lastly, optimism is also uh, shown in how the note was signed with a victory exclamation mark victory is an expression of expecting or hoping for a positive outcome which is of course optimism and patsy was known to use acronyms and so we see some 
um, Betsy had a degree in journalism and we see some misspellings, which was interesting. Business received an additional S and possession eliminated an S. Now, the quality of the writing in general with words like adequate, attaché, law enforcement, provoke, hence scrutiny and countermeasures, measures, as well as deviation, suggest that the quality of the writing was way higher than the misspellings of business and possession. Interestingly, the misspellings of the S's kind of makes sense from Patsy's perspective. It looks like the first word business is misspelled with an S and when possession came along, that S reminded her to make another mistake, which is similar. The word advice on the right comes from the ransom note and is spelled correctly. When Patsy was uh, requested to, to handwrite the note uh, by law enforcement, she misspelled advice with a Z. Again, the S mistake, misspelling, was apparently a trigger to do the same again. Once again, points in her direction instead of uh, avoidance. When you look at the note as a whole, we see in the first page, page that there are a lot of demands. Listen, must, will, will, make sure you will. And that is the dominant confrontational side of a stressed out type two. Now in the second page, the language became kinder. I advise we might, we might arrange an earlier delivery the gentleman watching over your daughter, I advise you. And so that is the accommodating part of a type two. And so we can see that the type two model for an unhealthy type two, let's say a stressed out type two, they become intrusive, overbearing and start to act like an unhealthy type eight dominant and confrontational. The Enneagram is an involved model and look it up online or buy my book of one reason. So in part three, this part, I have shown that Patsy was a known type two and that the language use, usage matches a type two like Patsy. So in summary of all three parts, in part one I showed that Pets and John are deceptive and they did not make John Benet a priority. In part two I showed that Patsy is the author of the note and today I have shown you that the behavioral tendencies and language use also matches Patsy. Up next, in part four, I will go over what the ransom note is actually telling us.